If the solubility of a slightly soluble ionic compound is known, then determining the value of KSP for that particular compound can be quite simple. Hi, Mr. B here. In this video, I'll explain how to determine the KSP value for a slightly soluble ionic compound based on the amount of the compound that dissolves in one liter of water. Suppose we're asked to determine the KSP value for a slightly soluble compound, such as the hypothetical compound M2Y3. The first step in determining the KSP value is to write a proper equilibrium equation, where the slightly soluble compound M2Y3 will dissolve in water to produce two M3 plus and three Y2 negative ions. Of course, since the compound is slightly soluble, at some point an equilibrium will be established where the rate of ionization will equal the rate of precipitation. To determine the oxidation states of the ions, you must remember, when writing formulas for ionic compounds in general, a process known as the crisscross method is usually employed. In other words, when writing this formula, the 3 was generated by crisscrossing the oxidation state of the N. The 2 was generated by crisscrossing the oxidation state of the Y. Therefore, it is evident that the oxidation number for oxidation state for N was 3 plus, and the oxidation state for Y was 2 negative. Remembering that in a binary ionic compound, the second element will always be the anion, and therefore, in this case, the Y must indeed possess a two negative charge. After the equilibrium is reached, a ratio of ions will be established where there are two M three plus ions and three Y two negative ions. Since the actual concentrations of these ions are unknown at this point, we may replace the N and the Y with X. So we may now write 2X plus 3X. The next step is to write the proper KSP expression, where KSP is equal to the concentration of the ions, in this case, M3 plus, and Y2 negative. In the equilibrium equation, we see that during the ionization, two M3 plus ions are produced and three Y2 negative ions. So when writing the KSP expression, the coefficients associated with each ion will now be used in, as the exponent for the ion in the KSP expression. So for M3 plus we write a two, and for Y2 negative we write a three. Notice that the KSP expression requires that we use concentrations. However, in the practice problem, we're only given grams, specifically 3.6 times 10 to the minus 17 grams of the compound actually dissolves. So we must now calculate moles and then molarity in order to generate the proper concentrations. To determine the moles of the compound, simply divide the mass by the gram formula mass. In this case, the gram formula mass for the hypothetical compound is given as 288 grams per mole. Substituting these values into the formula, we will generate the following. 3.6 times 10 to the minus 17 gram divided by 2.88 gram per mole will equal 1.3 times 10 to the minus 19 moles. So 
The 3.6 times 10 to the minus 17 grams actually represents 1.3 times 10 to the mi minus 19 mole of the compound that actually dissolves. Now that we know the moles, the molarity may be determined. Once molarity is known, then we're in a position to use the KSP expression. To determine the molarity, simply divide the moles by the liters. In this case, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 19 moles divided by one liter, which is the volume of water in which the compound was dissolved, will equal a molarity of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 19 molar. Now that the molarity is known, we may continue solving the K for the KSP. The next step in determining KSP will be to substitute for M and Y the values of X. So in the first place, in the first case, we place 2X squared, and in the second case, we place 3X cubed, simply being consistent with both the KSP expression and the actual ratio determined from the equilibrium equation. Now solving the parentheses, we will generate the following. 4x squared times 27x cubed. 4x squared times 27x cubed will, be, will equal 108x to the fifth. Remember, x actually represents the molar solubility of the compound. So now we may substitute for x the solubility determined from the previous calculation. So now we substitute 1.3 times 10 to the minus 19 molar. 1.3 times 10 to the minus 19 raised to the fifth power times 108 is equal to 4.0 times 10 to the negative 93. So we see that the KSP value for this particular compound is very small, which is indicated by the negative exponent.